Welcome, UCL fans, to our Season 2 Week 9 Review and Ranking for the United Championship League. I am, of course, your host, Nintendo Fanatic 64 We're going to take a look at the matchups that took place this week and then give our rankings that are going by a differential. Now, of course, uh, the UCL does not actually do things by differential. They actually will do it by who defeated who during the actual season for it. Uh, and the reason I mention that is because that will play into a bit into our rankings. But we'll get to that in a little bit. We're going to first start by going over the actual matchups that took place this week. If you do enjoy this video too, please leave a thumbs up. I almost forgot to mention that. Uh, don't forget, let me know down below who your predictions are for the playoffs. It's going to be a very close uh, one this right now, as far as it goes right now. Uh, it's really kind of up in the air of who could potentially even make playoffs for it. So. Uh, first matchup of the week, we had the Bristol City Blazikins, 4-4, four four, uh, taking on the South Beach Slow Kings, who were 2-6. And, and it was a 5-0 victory for the Bristol City Blazikins. MVP of the match goes to the Mega Gyarados from the Bristol City Blazikins, uh, who managed to get three knockouts this week. Uh, moving on into our second matchup, we had the Tucson Terrakions, who were 5-3, uh, taking on the Philadelphia for Alligators, who were 2-6. And with a 1-0 victory, uh, I consider a little bit of an upset victory, goes to the Philadelphia for Alligators. MVP of the match goes actually to the Trevenant, who was actually brought for the first time this week as well, uh, from Philadelphia for Alligators, who managed to get two knockouts this week. Uh, moving on to our third matchup, we had the Carolina Keldios, who are 6-2, and two, taking on the Long Island Reggie Rockies, who are 2-6. and six. And it was a 3-0 victory for the Carolina Keldios. MVP of the match goes to the Mega Scizor from the Carolina Keldios, who did manage to get three knockouts this week. Moving into our fourth matchup, we have the Newcastle Neo Kings, who are 3-5, and five, taking on the Tulsa Town Flames, who are 1-7. And, and it was a 2-0 victory for the Newcastle Neo Kings. Uh, the MVP of the match for this one was kind of hard, considering... Um, each member of the Newcastle Needle Kings basically managed to get one knockout with the exception of one uh, Pokemon, and one of the Pokemon on the Tulsa Town Flames died to actually struggling itself to death on it. Uh, so I decided to give the MVP to the matchup to Amungus from the Newcastle Needle Kings, mostly because of the defensive wall that uh, was put there that the Tulsa Town Flames just could not penetrate. Oop, clicking wrong things. Alright, so moving on to our fifth matchup. We have the Real Maril, who are 7-1, taking on the Grand Canyon Greninjas, who are 1-7. And, and it was a 5-0 victory for the Real Maril. MVP of the match goes to Maloswine from the Real Maril, who managed to get two knockouts this week. Moving on to our sixth matchup, we have the Toronto Tokikis, who are 4-4, four four, taking on the St. Louis Rampardos, who are 5-3. And, and it was a 4-0 victory for the St. Louis Rampardos. MVP of the match goes to the Del Fox from the St. Louis Rampardos, who managed to get three knockouts this week. Uh, moving on into our seventh matchup, we have the Manchester Magnezones, who are 3-5, and five, taking on the Pittsburgh Pichus, who are 5-3. and three. And it was a 4-0 victory, and again, kind of some people might consider it an upset victory, for the Manchester Magnezones. Uh, the MVP of the match actually goes to the Mian Chow from the Manchester Magazones, who managed to get three knockouts this week. And moving on now into the final match, which of course is our hype match of the week. We had the Durham Drudiguns and the Bronx Bear Ticks, both with a 7-1 record. Uh, you know, as far as the UCL is concerned, was in a three-way tie for first place. Uh, between these two teams and, of course, the Real Maril. Real Maril had beaten the Bronx Bear Ticks, the Durham Drudigans had beaten the Real Maril, and these were the first two times that these two teams were going at it this season. And it was a 2-0 victory for the Durham Drudigans. So the MVP of the match goes to Club Fable, who managed to get three knockouts this week. So that does it for the actual review. Now we're going to go ahead and... We have to add it again, so we're going to get some live editing in on this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the actual rankings. Okay, all right, so I'm just going to put that up there, make it a little bigger so we can all read that. <coughs> there we go. All right, so after nine weeks of competition, uh, the rankings are, sit like, are sitting like this. So in 16th place, of course, we have the Grand Canyon Greninjas. Uh, one and eight uh, record and a differential score of negative 21. 
Uh, 15th place, we have the Tulsa Town Flames, or also 1 and 8. Their differential score is a negative 13. Uh, 14th place, we have the South Beach Slow Kings, who are 2 and 7, with a differential score of negative 16. 13th place, we have the Long Island Reggie Rockies, who are also 2 and 7, with a differential score of negative 14. In 12th place, we have the Philadelphia Alligators, who move on to a 3 and 6 uh, record, and a differential score of negative 15. In 11th place, we have the Newcastle Neo Kings, who are 4 and 5 with a differential score of negative 6. 10th uh, place, we have the Toronto Toka Kiss, who are 4 and 5 and a differential score of negative 4. In 9th place, we have the Manchester Magnazones, who are 4 and 5 and a differential score of negative 2. Uh, in 8th place, we have the Tucson Terrakions, who are 5 and 4 with a differential score of negative 3. Uh, the Pittsburgh Pichus are also now 5 and 4 and a differential score of 6. Uh, Bristol City Blazikins moving up a little bit more this week with a 5-4 and four record, and their differential score is now 7. Uh, St. Louis Rampardos, I think, having the biggest jump so far, are now 6-3, and three, uh, and with a differential score of 3, trying to get back into the actual hunt for playoffs. Uh, moving on to the top four teams, uh, we have the Carolina Keldios, 4th uh, place, 7-2 record, uh, with a positive 11 differential score. Uh, Bronx Bear Ticks are now uh, third place, 7-2, uh, differential score is 17. Now, for the next part, for the top two teams, this is where if you look at the UCL, they would have them flipped, because we have the Durham Dreadigans, who are 8-1 with a differential of 14, whereas the Real Maril are 8-1 with a differential of 24. However, with the UCL, because the Durham Dreadigans had defeated the Real Maril, the Durham Dreadigans would be ranked number one after this week. Um, Definitely a lot of things that could potentially happen um, after next week. Hopefully we can start actually formulating some type of a playoff picture here for it. Um, but it's really too close to call. I mean, I would say, in all honesty, almost any team from 11th place up to 1st place have a chance at potentially you know, making playoffs. So like the Newcastle New York Kings, Toronto Tokyo Manchester Magazines, all in must-win situations. Um, because if for some reason, like, the, even though the Carolina Keldios and the Bronx Bear Ticks have the, you know, second best record in the re league right now at 7-2, and two, if they were to lose the next six matchups while any one of those teams win the next, uh, let's see, you guys, they have, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah, they have six weeks left, so if they lose, if they for some reason lose the next six weeks, uh, that would bring their record to a 7-8. and eight. Whereas if any of those teams actually get, win the next uh, six matchups, that would put them all at a 10-5 and five record and put them above the others. But that, of course, has to also include St. Louis Ramparters losing the rest of the weeks, Bristol State Blaze Kings, P Pittsburgh Beaches, Tucson Track Hands. So there's like a lot of things that could potentially happen. But, I mean, there's always, you know, by probably week 11... Uh, or after week 10 even, we can start actually formulating who has a chance at making playoffs and who does not. Um, definitely from 8th place with the Tucson Terrakions, uh, moving up, they have a higher chance at making it. St. Louis Rampardos, um, also, of course, in you know, really tough contention, they still have to just beat some of the, uh, you know, they just have to keep the momentum going. Carolina Keldios, as I said in other videos, um, have, you know, the talent to make it, but they have yet to go up against, basically, I think, I don't think they've gone up against a lot of these other top teams, like, let me pull up, again, I'm kind of doing this randomly, just talking at the end here, and we'll have to move that one out of the way, um, we can find it on here, so, fourth team down, you can kind of see the Carolina Keldios, um, next week they go up against South Beach Slow Kings, but next week, I mean, look at it, like, four... For the five, even five, you can consider. I mean, he has to go up against the Durham Dreadigans, top-ranked team. He has to go up against Tucson Terrakians, kind of on a bit of a downward downward tilt right now, but could always turn it back around. Has to go up against the Bronx Bear Ticks, you know, another team that is you know top-level team. He has to go up against St. Louis Rampardos, a team that wants to make it back into that playoffs and won't probably make many mistakes for the next several weeks, and has to still go up against the Real Maril. So. Again, looking back at the actual rankings, Carolina Keldio's 7-2 record could end up, you know, needs to at least win, I would say, to have a shot at still making playoffs. Has to at least beat the St. Louis Rampardos. Uh, 
and hope that, you know, they don't lose more than at least two matchups, but they have to go up against three, the top three teams left in the league. Um, St. Louis Rampartos are no, you know, joking matter. Uh, Tucson Terrakions are no joking matter. South Beach Slow Kings will give him a run for the money, but I think that he will come out on top on that one. But again, we'll get into more of that with the predictions uh, for our week 10, which should be going up on Friday. If you did enjoy this video, I hope you leave it a thumbs up. Don't forget, let me know down below who your predictions are for playoffs, and possibly after week 10, depending on how my scheduling goes, I might even do an actual playoff predictions video. I did one last season. I want to try and get one done this season, but there's a lot of things I want to do for this season that I haven't had a chance to do yet, but... Um, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to see more UCL content every at least Tuesday and Friday with reviews and rankings on Tuesdays and previews on Fridays. But thank you all again for watching. Take care and goodbye.